This tutorial will teach us how to set up Visual Studio Code for C Sharp. Write a tutorial in C Sharp. Connect to a WebSocket and retrieve and parse Forex data into JSON format. You can download a version of the code pre-filled with your API key from the C-Sharp WebSocket example on the WebSocket Docs page. We'll leave the link in the description. To begin, open Visual Studio Code and navigate to View Extensions. In the search bar, type C-Sharp to find the available extensions and click the Install button. Start by creating a new directory in Windows Explorer. Next, open VS Code within the folder our initial step will be to set up the .NET framework. This process will create the project definition file and the main file. The project comes with a default Hello World example. Installing NuGet via the package manager is essential. Bring up the VS command palette by pressing F1 or Fn plus F1 on Windows. Then type NuGet and select the NuGet package manager add package command. In the prompted search bar, enter newtonesoft.json and press enter. Choose the matching package and select the latest version at the top. Similarly, install websocket.client using the search bar and install the latest version. Now, Let's acquire the WebSocket API key. Once logged in, you can copy your WebSocket API key from the dashboard. We'll leave the link in the description. Now that everything is set up, let's begin writing some code. First, we'll import the necessary libraries required to run our program. We'll first define the namespace as CSWebSocket and then create a class named Program. Inside the Program class, there's a private string variable named Streaming underscore API underscore key, initialized with the value Your API Key. This is where you add your API key obtained from TraderMade. The main method serves as the entry point of the program. It creates an instance of the program class and calls the initialize method. Inside the initialize method, we have a try catch block that encapsulates the main functionality of our program. First, we create a manual reset event named exit event to handle exiting the program. Next, we define the URL of the WebSocket server we want to connect to. We then create a WebSocket client using the WebSocket client class and pass in the URL. Within the using statement, we set the reconnect timeout property of the client to 30 seconds to handle reconnection attempts. We subscribe to the reconnection happened event to handle reconnection events and if a reconnection occurs, we print a message indicating the type of reconnection. We also subscribe to the message received event, which triggers whenever a message is received from the WebSocket server. If the message is connected, we construct a JSON string containing our API key and the symbols we're interested in and then send this JSON string to the server using the send method of the WebSocket client. After setting up the event subscriptions, we start the WebSocket client with the start method. Finally, we use the wait1 method of the exit event to block the main thread until the exit event is signaled, effectively keeping the program running until it is manually terminated. In case an exception occurs during the execution of the code inside the try block, we catch it in the catch block and print out an error message indicating the type of exception that occurred. Now that we have our program, let's run it. Voila, you get lightning fast prices retrieved through the WebSocket into your terminal. Now that we have received our prices, we need to parse them into JSON format for further processing. To achieve this, we will declare a class named 
quote. Then, within the client.message received, dot subscribe function, we will add an else statement and deserialize object to parse the data into the quote class. We can now print the parse data as needed. Voila! Remember to subscribe, like, and share our content. Thanks for watching.